Welcome everyone to our live demo on how we can help you enhance your current Microsoft DDI environment. Uh, today we're going to take to the API. Now there's some scripting that you can do obviously in like a native Microsoft environment. You can obviously use PowerShell to help you automate your underlying services, but it can be a little bit clunky, right? And, and the thing about doing a PowerShell or a Microsoft specific workflow or automation workflow is that of course you can't use it then with any of your other services. Even if you're using Microsoft Azure, it's likely going to be a totally different workflow. So the beauty of using an overlay like Maestro is that you can create one workflow, use the Maestro APIs, and then let Maestro do the translating for the different services, even if you're gonna change cloud services or change your managed DNS service or, or change your DHCP services later, you can stay with that same automation workflow. So let's uh, let's actually take a look at what we're going to do today. We're just going to do some easy things, especially for those of you who are just getting started with your, your automation journey, if you'll allow me to say that. We'll jump into the, the Maestro API here. I just want to show you, I have the Maestro UI open. I'm using an IP address, you know, generally you probably see an FQDN here, but this is my lab. All I've done to get to the API is amend it with this MMWS slash API slash doc. And this comes built into Maestro. If you were to download the free trial and install it today, it'd take you about a half an hour and you can get directly to the APIs immediately. Okay, so first what I wanna show, this is what the REST API looks like. We have Swagger built into our backend API. Swagger is like a way to just try it out right here in the documentation. Um, so if you're familiar with Postman, it's a little like that, but just makes things, if you're just getting started, it's it's an easy way to get started. If you're, you know, already doing a lot of automation, you can try things out here before you kind of include these things in your larger workflows. All I'm going to do today is show you some, some get and post commands or some read and, and write commands, if you will. And we can see I have get DNS servers here. I'm under the DNS servers uh, object and I can run a few different tasks. I see get DNS servers. It tells me over here on the right what it'll actually do for me. And we'll go ahead and expand that again. And this is one I can just click on try it out and get information immediately with literally doing nothing but clicking a button. So I see here all of my DNS servers. I have dns1.maestro.com. I have my Azure servers. I have edns2.maestro.com. And of course, if I were to go over here, I can see all of those DNS servers right here in the UI. This is the information that it's giving me. Now I can also do some crafty things in put in, let's say a filter to only see my Microsoft DNS services. Cause that's what we're talking about today is enhancing your, your Microsoft environment with Maestro. And you can see now I only get one server return because I only have uh, one Microsoft server in my environment. So if I were to do that in the UI, I can see that same information. Okay, so we can also do things then like create a new DNS server. And this is, I'm not gonna run totally through every aspect of this. And in fact, if you really wanna dive deep, we have this automation playlist available. You can go check that out anytime you want in the Men and Mice YouTube channel. Um, it's called the automation playlist, but we'll just kind of jump in here. If I want to create a new DNS server, I actually have the full template right here. This gives me all of the information I could possibly need. And I, all I can do is click on it and then I can change some of these string values or the data values or whatever it is. Now, if I don't totally know what all of these, these key value pairs are, I can click on model and get a really nice reference as to what all of these things mean, whether they're optional or required, et cetera, et cetera. Now, because this is you know a five or 10 minute demo, I've already created some of this. And so I am just going to copy and paste from my handy notepad and we'll go ahead and Oh, well, let me let me just show you what I did. I'm calling a new server demo-dns.maestro.com. I'm using a proxy server, dns1.maestro.com. You'll remember seeing that in the UI. With Microsoft servers, I only need one agent in the entire forest. I don't have to create an agent for each and every Microsoft DNS or DHCP server. As long as I have that one centralized proxy server, I can go ahead and specify that right there. So I've done that. I've specified the IP address, of course. I've told it it is of type Microsoft. Enabled, false. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it disabled for now since we're not really using it. Created, last modified information. And then, of course, with everything in Maestro, we get the option to put a save comment in. And this is just informational. Uh, why did I create this server? Things like that. So now we'll go ahead and click on try it out. 
And you see, I get a response code of 201. That's fabulous. Anything in the 200s is going to mean it's successful. Um, you can see it's created a reference object number for this particular DNS server, DNS server 8. If I were to go in and refresh my UI, now I can see my new Microsoft server right in there. If I wanted to view history, now I get all of the information, right? The time it was created, the user that created it, uh, description, th that's automatic description, right? My comment that I put in there, you'll remember I put new demo. And then of course the client that created, I can see that it was created from the REST API, which is great information to have if I'm doing some troubleshooting later. Okay. Let's jump into a, a few other examples, a few other use cases so that you can really get started. I'm going to, let's go to DNS zones for this next one. Now keep in mind, I'm doing a lot of DNS stuff, but we can do all this stuff with for DHCP. We can do a lot of things with IPAM records, pretty much any object available within Maestro. So with DNS zones, I'm just going to show how we can get some DNS zone information. Um, again, I can just click on try it out and get literally every zone available to me from the Maestro environment. But again, I might want to do some sort of filter. So maybe I want to do the filter 80 integrated equals true. Now, of course, AD is a reference to Active Directory, a reference to Microsoft Active Directory, of course. And if we try that out, now I'm going to get all of the zones that are, in fact, 80 integrated zones or Active Directory DNS zones. So I can see bronx.maestro.com, brooklyn.maestro.com. You see the pattern here. And of course, we see Active Directory. The authority is Active Directory. We can see that same information here in the UI. If I were to click on bronx.maestro.com here, I see Active Directory. This is an AD integrated zone. I can actually go in here, click on the AD integrated filter, and see all of that information right here in the UI. Obviously, we're going to use get to pull some information so that we can then do something with it, do a post command with that. So this information will come in handy you know, in the beginning of our workflow as we need to collect new information as it changes, maybe daily, and then we can do something with that information. We can secure an object. We can put access control on top of an object. We can build templates out so that we are creating the same type of DHCP scopes, the same type of DNS records with all of the same information. You know, this is what automation gives us is consistency and therefore reliability. We'll do one more example. Let's jump into DNS records here. If I can find it, yes, DNS records. So I am going to post DNS records. Of course, I can add multiple DNS records at the same time using Swagger. If you're using something like Ansible or, or even Postman or something along those lines, you might just create a loop, right? An automation loop, which is going to consistently create new records and maybe automatically um, increment things or you know, lots of ways that we can kind of go about this. But just to give you uh, another example of how we can create something new. Again, we get our, our model and model schema right here. If I were to click on that, it gives me all the information right here in the template. If, again, I need to understand what these things mean, I can click on model, get that information. Now, of course, I came prepared again, so I am just going to copy and paste this, make sure I get all of the brackets, because in my trial, I did not always do that. Okay, so now we're going to try it out once again. We see 201 here. You'll notice this says errors, right? But, but don't be alarmed. That is going to be what gets returned to us. And we know that because we can see our response class right here. We know what to expect when we click on try it out, right? So there's going to be errors. If there, if there are errors, um, it will show us that then in this string. So luckily, I do see errors, but there, there actually are none. Those brackets are empty. So now I've created new DNS records. It's been given a reference object. I created records demo and demo2. They're both type A. I gave it uh, an IP address and I said which DNS reference zone uh, it was in, right? And I got that information again using the get command. I could see which, which zone it's in, DNS zone one. Now, if I were to actually go to, it's Bronx, and I know that, I see DNS zone one here, and I would also be able to get that information from the UI. But jumping into this zone, then I can see my demo records were created. If I were to view the history, I can see that they were just created right now, well, a minute ago. <laughs> um, 
uh, in real time. You can see from my clock here, it is in real time and using the REST client and I get all of that great information. And then of course, you know, this information builds. So we go past 30, 60, 90 days. It will, you know, if you want it to, it will record your logs in a centralized place, no matter where this record lives for as long as you want it to live. And therefore we get all of the information uh, at our fingertips in a centralized place. That's all I had for today. I think I've hit my 10 minute mark. Again, if you have any questions, go ahead and get the, the free trial, reach out anytime. But if you can grab the free trial now, you can then get started with automation. And we actually have a deployment playlist too, if you want to uh, get started with the free trial on your own. If you just click on playlists, go to um, Maestro Deployment Tutorials, and that should get you started, like I said, in less than a half hour. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you in the next one.